Daniel, what level will you be talking about today? I will be talking about the third level in the game, stage three. Where does it take place? So in stage two, Alice moved through a like, you know, like a woods area, and she's um, come out of that area, and she is back into an area that looks sort of similar to stage one in that it's like a series of islands. We can see in the background that there's uh, palm trees with coconuts. There's also whales in the background. There's some blimps with the word fight on it. There's crabs. <laughs> there's little tiki statues as well at the end of each island. And there's also the whale at the end with its mouth open. And you fly into that whale. And the I mean, next level takes place in the whale's mouth. So, you know, this would probably be like, like a ocean or a sea level, I suppose. A tropical level. Yeah, tropical. But uh, yeah, in terms of the actual, um, each of the challenges themselves, I suppose the start is quite similar to the start of the first level, where you know, the crab here is acting like a goomba, which is telling you to fly vertically into the air, you know, preparing you for the area of water. Then we have a series of the albatrosses, and Although they're not necessarily exactly stacked on top of each other, they are more or less, particularly with the second and the third albatross, you, you know, if you are going for the balloons, you have to navigate between them, which requires you know, more fine mo um, vertical movement. So the main theme for this level is the introduction of having two enemies sandwich a balloon. Now, there's not too many instances of this in in this level but it is as i said it is uh, introduced in this level so you know there are several challenges where you've got two enemies that are you know sort of vertically stacked with a you know, with a balloon in the middle and so the game sort of encourages you to be able to move through those more confined spaces you know which are created by the enemies in their position and then after that we get to this wall of albatrosses and i think this is quite a tricky part actually and i as soon as you get that second balloon, you're already at quite a height, and then these uh, and then the albatrosses are already flying on towards you. So it's quite a so there's not a lot of um, time for the player to quickly maneuver out of the way. After those two um, relatively difficult challenges, as you're underneath the spikes, if you get a balloon, the uh, P balloon will appear, which then leads to a complete shift in the uh, pacing of the uh, of the level so i mean if the player does get a balloon you know then i suppose this next section is quite different to if you don't get the balloon so if you do get the balloon then the spinning sparrows the albatrosses and the crabs on that next on that longer island you can just move right through them so in particular the um on the sparrows reinforce getting the balloons because if you've got the invincibility and you're going for the balloons you can easily wipe out on the sparrows so doing so just kind of reinforces your motivation to get the balloons but then after that there's another wall of, of the albatrosses and they sort of if you've got the invincibility then it's more a case of trying to line up your full trajectory with their movement so that you can combo them up together uh, and then you can just run through the crabs at the end so it's you know, a very different type of challenge than the first two. However, if you don't get the invincibility, then it's really tricky, right? They push you down pretty far. Yeah, exactly. So the whole section with the four sparrows, it's sort of like a sort of bouncing ball situation where if you are aiming for the balloons, then it's very easy for one of the sparrows to bump you and then you know, for you then to get bumped by another, by another sparrow and, uh, and so on and so forth. So it can be quite a dangerous area. And, you know, that sort of bouncing back and forth can um, suck up some of the time that you need to then duck underneath the set of albatrosses um, later on. So, so it is quite a tricky area. I mean, you can just fly underneath, but then there is another sandwiching sort of situation going on with the lower most sparrow and the water. It's actually quite easier in this next section. We do have another enemy type, like those, I don't know what you'd call them, skinny birds. The way that they're organized, they just fly overhead and they're not 
you know, much of an obstruction look at all really. This next section does look quite hazardous but it's not as bad as it seems because although the albatrosses here are in, in, in groups of three, they actually move out diagonally so they sort of move um, in sort of like a C formation and you move right through the middle. And again, you know, this is another kind of sandwiching effect actually. And then we got a bit here where there's a, you know, like a narrow passage with a heart in there, you know, which you can move through as well. So again, it's reminding you of the idea of um, actually not using your balloons, which is interesting because, you know, aside from that one area, you need the balloons for the whole level. What's interesting, I suppose, is as you get to the end of that corridor, there's um, and the way the camera is positioned, you can't actually see the subsequent island. And so you see the balloons, you see the uh, background, and you have to rely on that to indicate that there is a platform below. So I suppose it's a, it's a neat example of um, the way that certain visual elements are used to guide the player. That doesn't exactly communicate that that means there's land. Well, I suppose if there's trees, you'd assume the trees would be on land as opposed to in water. Oh, yeah, okay. But I suppose what's actually the really tricky bit is that the platform isn't very uh, long. Uh, sorry, the island isn't very long. And so, and you've got that sort of slippery momentum as well, don't you? So sometimes you can sort of over jump this or over fall this uh, section which is why they actually have the little tiki statues because they indicate where the end of the uh, island is and if we see through each of the islands we can see uh, the same pattern that the tiki well, aside from the very very first one right behind you at the start the tiki um, statues they indicate where the end of the island is I always thought that was a lady who lived on the island <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what it is. Um, we can save that for another podcast, I suppose. Um, <laughs> similar to the first level, actually, you know, like the last section is its own thing, really. And what that is, is you just need to make sure that your balloon is beneath each of the albatrosses moving through. It seems like this is the kind of thing that's happened a couple of times over the level where you get pressure to go up from the balloons and stay down from the enemies. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's like a, the balloons you know, encourage you to maneuver in particular ways. You know, we talked about in, the, in Stage 1 how the balloons are like the bananas in Donkey Kong Country as opposed to the coins in Super Mario Brothers. But it's interesting now that in some cases, like in those few sandwiching instances that we talked about, the balloons do function more as coins where they are a reward for, for scaling the challenge and accepting a more difficult challenge. I think you see that more and more as the game progresses. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, I found, uh, you know, I'm not sure about you guys, but I found that doing the first two levels, it was really easy to get all the balloons. But then after that, it was like, you know, like, so by this level, I'm like, oh, I can't get all the balloons. Oh, I started feeling like, the way they're set out, it suggests that I should be able to get them all, or that by me naturally following on the course, I will get all the balloons. But that, but then the function of the balloons changed, and you know I had a reaction to that as a player. Yeah, I shared that experience. This was the point at which it wasn't. You you had to be ahead of the stage really to be collecting everything. You had to know a bit what was coming. Whereas the first two levels are very reactive. Even if you get screwed up, you can still go back and get what you missed. Mm -hmm. You can actually get through this level in two ways. You can follow the balloons, which tend to be near the top of the level, or you can float near the, uh, just above on the water's surface. And you can actually get through a significant amount of the level without having to engage with the enemies if you do take this lower path. I suppose it's interesting because it's not like in, say, Super Mario Brothers and games like that, where it, you know, it's not clearly signaled to the player, but it's more of a sort of organic form of uh, branching paths, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, I mean, that's sort of in a way a natural consequence of being able to move horizontally and vertically through space and then having these sort of layers of enemies or contrary, contrary motion moving towards you. And then we have this little 500 point bumper, which I haven't used much really. And then we have the whale. And uh, I noticed before that you can actually park yourself on top of the whale, not just in its mouth. <laughs> so, Should have been a different yeah. exit. Shortcut. Yeah, I mean, you could have gone through a spout or something like that. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> so yeah, so that's this level. So, you know, we see the introduction of sort of sandwiching you between, uh, between enemies and we see how the function of the balloons are changing in, in what is a, you know, a level that isn't terribly different from the first level, but it is introducing sort of different uh, paradigms, I suppose. So, you know, we've got the crabs, which sort of just sort of walk forward and stop. We've got those uh, balloon fight enemies that I talked about before. They sort of move in a slight sine wave um, and they move horizontally across the screen. We've also got these little um, sparrows or little kind of like blackbirds and they move in circles and they circle the balloons sort of about halfway through the level. And what else do you have? Well, there's actually two types of albatross. You know, there's the ones that move straight and there's the ones that can move out diagonally as well. So I suppose, you know, one theme in terms of the enemy design is that you've got a lot of enemies that move horizontally. Whereas in the previous level, you had a lot of enemies that would move uh, vertically, right? Like you had the spiders. The falling bits. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And I think the difference between stage two and stage three really stems from the aspect of their movement. Because with the spiders, right, you know, as they move up and down, it's quite easy to navigate around them. They have quite a simple timing and you have you know, plenty of time to respond to them. Whereas with many of the enemies that we talked about before, they are moving from left to right. So not only is the screen scrolling from right onto left, but the enemies are moving from left to right. And so they're actually moving on towards you. And therefore, although they have fairly simple movement patterns like the spiders, they're also, because they're moving on towards you, you have less time to react and to maneuver around them. Yeah, I think it's also worth noting uh, this stage has the fastest scroll speed that Balloon Kid has, whereas the two prior were much slower. So if you're also wondering why is it tricky to manage your horizontal positioning, it's also because you're dealing with the fact that the game's an auto-scroller. The flip side of that is, I don't know why, but I have a lot easier time maintaining a vertical position than a horizontal position. So moving past the spiders I found trickier because, you know, you needed a time dashing forward through them, whereas an albatross you can get past just by maintaining a steady vertical position. You also have finer movement control vertically. I mean, it's a much smaller increment on your vertical velocity than it is on your horizontal velocity when you move. And you can separate vertical movement from horizontal movement, but you can't separate horizontal movement from vertical movement. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so there is that sort of horizontal movement, and that's sort of where they, where the developers create those sort of sandwich challenges, where you're either sandwiched between two enemies or the water below and an enemy above you. Um, and so, you know, that tests your ability to maintain a very particular uh, vertical position and you sort of have to dance between the enemies a bit more whereas that's not so much the case in some of the other levels where they the enemies were a bit easier to move around i thought yeah you're also seeing a trend of the game giving you less and less ground to stand and refill your balloons seeing as most of this occurs over the water yes yeah, stage the, this stage is unquestionably Impossible without balloons. I, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, Greg. We haven't we haven't tested that. We need you to do another video <laughs> so we can test that. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the map here. It looks like there might be enough birds to jump <laughs> on. There's, yeah. there's one pretty obvious gap that I don't think you're going to make. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. yeah, just under the spikes. Yeah, it's the first time the spikes show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Greg can try. Yeah, Greg, try. <laughs> Balloon Kid Balloonless Percent? 
<laughs> Wario fan, do you have any thoughts on this level? I guess if I could comment on anything, maybe the uh, balloon fight blimps imply some sort of lore where <laughs> balloon fighting is a sport in this world and it's advertising the events of the NES game. While Alice, an enthusiast of the uh, sport, whatever. This is just going places. We don't need to... <laughs> I saw it as more dystopian than that, because they're over the ocean where there's, you know, nobody's going to live here except for the tiki statues. What about the ladies on the island you were just talking about? Yeah, but, like, why wouldn't the balloons advertising balloon fighting be flying over the city where people live? She's the only one that hasn't gotten the message yet. This is marketing. <laughs> okay. It's called marketing, Golem. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 